oh, one thing hi again that one thing that I forgot to mention was um, to get a schematic for radio and let me tell you two helpful websites one is nostalgiaair.org and that that's a wonderful site the, the guy running that is just really super guy and he has thousands and thousands of radio schematics and and service data like like here you could just download this from free from the internet he has all this information for free and you could get uh, electrical specifications service information here's some service information you can get um, this is from RCA uh, original documents and I think John John F Ryder had published all this originally and then you could get uh, the schematic and this is very important that you get a schematic and then you can actually see uh, what the circuit looks like and and how it's wired and, and they also have a wiring diagram with this, this package that I was able to get and if the schematic was hard to follow sometimes this wiring diagram was really indispensable because um, it's easier to follow than the schematic you know, at many times. Someone like me, I'm not a radio expert, and I, I really needed this uh, this wiring diagram. And you could get these things for, for free uh, from nostalgiaair.org. And another great site is uh, antiqueradios.com, and they have forums on there. And you could um, read read the forums, what people... Uh, say about radios and how they test them and and there's a lot a lot of techniques and, and information that's that's very very um, um, you know helpful and uh, I did as much studying as I could about about this radio chassis and um, it, it was a really good thing because I, I, I learned a lot about how it worked and um, you know things to look for um, you know, all, all the all the values of the parts I was able to order replacement capacitors uh, very easily uh, using the the parts list that I was able to get on the internet and, and the good thing about that is that um, here's the parts list and it, it has every part that's in the radio and you could get this on the internet amazingly uh, nowadays it's fantastic and uh, it, it was great because a lot of the capacitors that were original, like these original capacitors, I say about 60% of them were the wrong values. And, and that's because whoever worked on the radio, because the radio is 70 years old, uh, in the past uh, 70 years, it was repaired maybe two, three times, and all the capacitors were already replaced. And the radio repairman, you know, he did as, as, as best as he could, but a lot of times he didn't have the right part. So he used something that was like close, but, you know, sometimes they weren't that close. You know, sometimes the .005 was like replaced with like a .1 microfarad. And, um, you know, he just kind of, sometimes they just put in whatever they had, you know, because you know, they were a business and they had to get the thing working. And I guess the customer wouldn't really know that they didn't have the right part in there, as long as it worked uh, pretty much like it, it did before. So the, anyway, I just said all that to say this. The, the parts list is really indispensable, and the schematic too. You really need to get those, because um, a lot of times the prior servicemen just put whatever part they had. And uh, I wanted the radio to work, you know, you know, right. And then also... I replaced every resistor in here too and a lot of times you don't have to replace the resistors but in this case I did because um, the resistors were like 20 30 40 percent sometimes even 10 times higher than what they were supposed to be for the numerical value like say like a 1 meg resistor was like turning up to be about 3 meg so that's 300 percent higher than what it should have been so the only way that the tubes would have been biased properly would be to uh, replace the resistors with the resistor uh, networks that, that were supposed to be in there. So that's what I did. So um, 
In the next video, I'll uh, I'll actually show the radio uh, working. And what I had done here's another little extra tip. I I took the dial off the radio. You can see I have um, just the tuning capacitor hooked up with a new belt I put on. So you actually have to take the entire dial off to put the belt on. Uh, that's how this was made, and they made it kind of difficult to replace it. So I, I got a um, a new belt from this company called, I think it was Adams Manufacturing, and they make all different size belts for these antique radios. It's it's kind of belt driven, and um, but I also want to take the I took the whole dial off because I didn't want to get damaged because. I don't, I don't have a special frame to hold this, so I'm just balancing it, which probably is not the best thing, but I balance against the old electrolytic capacitors, and uh, it's, it's, it's stable and all that. It's not going to fall, but I didn't want to damage the, the dial, so it was probably a better idea to actually take the dial off, uh, you know, when I worked on it, and it took about a, a month of... Uh, of working probably uh, four hour a day maybe like about four days a week it took about a month to replace all the capacitors and resistors so the idea is just to work really slow and take your time and 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 it's actually fun actually when you get into it so um, the next the next video I'll be powering it up uh, take it easy have a good day bye